very happy first to introduce the Republican winner of the 5th dis District Congressional race, which I can't, that's the first time I've said it. But, uh, <laughs> and I think our next congressman from the 5th di District of Massachusetts, John Golnick. I want to thank Larry for the soapbox. Huh? Well, look, uh, you know, uh, I want to, uh, my name is John Golnick and I live in Carlisle, Massachusetts. Uh, we've got 30 more days. Uh, 30 more days is all we have. It's, it's, it's going to go by fast. And uh, I, I just, I, I can't do it alone. I need your help. And, uh, you know, I got into this race and I want to also thank Larry Beerfield. I see him back there. Thank you very much. And there he is. Hey, Liam, how are you? Thank you very much for drinking that cider. Uh, I want to thank Donna. I want to thank Susan. I want to thank Judy. I want to thank a wonderful staff that I have, volunteers and otherwise, Carrie and Pat and Calvin. Uh, am I missing anyone? Who else am I missing, Judy? Anybody? I think I've covered everybody. But I want to thank everybody because, you know, I'm only as good as they are, and they always push me to be a better person and a better candidate, and I couldn't do it without them. But look, I got into this race because, like a lot of us right now, I'm unhappy with the direction of the country. I'm unhappy with the buyouts and the takeovers and the runaway spending. And I'm unhappy with an arrogance that's coming out of Washington, D.C., that somehow they think they know what's better for us than we do. And that simply isn't the way that should work. Now, look, strictly from a, from a, from a district perspective, I think that we don't, no longer have a voice. I think that we're disenfranchised. And I think the reason we're disenfranchised is because our current representative votes with the leadership in Washington, D.C. 98% of the time. 98% of the time, Representative Songas votes with Nancy Pelosi and the leadership in Washington, D.C., in a district that's 55 percent unenrolled. And I use this line every now and again, and I feel this with a chuckle. You know, I don't even agree with my wife 98 percent of the time. So that gives you a little bit of an idea about how often Nikki Songas votes with the leadership in Washington, so D.C. We're going to run a very bad, straightforward campaign. We're going to talk about the issues. We're going to talk about Representative Songas' voting record, which I just touched on. We're going to talk about the jobs crisis that we're currently in in this, in this Commonwealth right now. You know, the unemployment rate here, the unemployment rate in the Commonwealth has doubled since January 2007. We have unemployment up in some of the towns in Lawrence and in Lowell. Lawrence is up around 16, 17 percent. Lowell's probably at 12. There hasn't been any net new jobs created in the Commonwealth in the last 10 years. That's a problem. Unemployment rate across the country is at 9.5, 9.6 percent. It hasn't been this high for this long since the Great Depression. Now, why aren't we creating jobs? Well. Some jobs are being created, sure. Not sustainable ones, the ones that are being created by the government. $622 million has been put into this, this, uh, this state to create 12,400 jobs. That's a price tag of a little more than $50,000 a job. And these jobs aren't sustainable. Historically, jobs are created in the private sector. Why, aren't jo why, aren't, why isn't the private sector creating jobs now? Because they've lost faith, faith in the leadership in Washington, D.C. There's too much uncertainty. There's a number of things we can do, I think, to get this economy going again and get businesses hiring. The first thing I think we need to do is we need to cut this corporate tax rate from 35%. Look, that, make no mistake about it, that health care plan that was passed was a bad, it was a bad, it was a bad bill. It, to me, health care is about opening access. You open access by lowering costs. How do you lower costs? You lower costs by increasing competition. This bill doesn't, does none of those things. In fact, this bill is a job killer. How any person can vote on a bill that has a 2.3% excise tax on medical device manufacturers, many of whom reside here in the 5th District. How can anyone do that? It isn't to do it in a smart way. And I don't think it takes 2,600 pages of legislation to do it. I think we're going to allow people to buy insurance across state lines. That's going to force insurance companies to, to, to compete for our business by lowering their premiums and still maintaining the quality of care. I think that you need to repeal some of these state mandates. We need to have more choice in health care. Last but not least, we need to talk about some medical malpractice reform. It's $54 billion over 10 years, but the real savings will come when doctors don't have to practice defensive medicine. So instead of going to the doctor because you have a stomach problem and you get, you go through a battery of tests, the doctor might say, hey, you know what? Go exercise three days a week and stop drinking coffee and come back and see me in the month. This is where the real savings will come from. And last but not least, last but not least, we have to talk about the deficit and the debt load that we currently have. You know, candidate Obama chased John McCain around because the Republicans dared to run a $500 billion deficit their last year in office. In their first year in office, they tripled that. Our debt level has increased by 55%. 55% our debt level has increased over the last 18 months. Now, I'm going to bring this down to a household level. If anyone here owns a small business or even in their home, if they increase their debt load by 55% in 18 months, where would we race. be? I can we feel it. We can win this race, and I know we can. The wind is at our back. The wind is at our back. 
We have a representative who is out of touch with the people of this district, but I can't do this alone. I need your help. Come, look, you may not like to make phone calls, but there's plenty of other things you can do. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your colleagues, send them to our site. Come up to the office. You can bang on doors. We'll give you some flyers to hand out. You can hand out these flyers to your friends. If you want to make calls, you can, but if you don't, you don't have to. If you love to do standouts, come grab a sign. Try to find sign locations for us, but spread the word. Because I promise you, if you help me, I will bring our voice back down to Washington, D.C. for us, for all of us. But let's go win this race, and thank you so much for your support.